So people often come to me and ask me, what is your current setup? I know that you're a reviewer, but what are you currently using and why do you enjoy it? And uh, I have to answer them. Most of the time I just tell them what my current setup is, I'll be honest with you. But I want to give you a fair warning first. If something is my current setup, doesn't mean that it is going to become your current setup. It doesn't mean that it is the best thing in the world and it doesn't mean that it is unbeatable. It just matches very well with my current taste and my current expectations of audio. So let's explore what I personally listen to in my free time. Ever since I received those, they pretty much didn't leave my ears. Those are the Fear Audio NA4 or Neon 4 from their Frontier series. It is an EM that is priced at 2,300 US dollars. I don't know what are you expecting a reviewer to use in his free time. Like, are you expecting us to use mid-range EMs, although we have flagships? Well, you should expect a flagship to sound better than a mid-range headphone. Otherwise, why would they still exist? But you'd be surprised at how good a true flagship can sound like. This is, this is pretty much a video about a true flagship. Around this price point, you can undoubtedly get many other interesting stuff. You can get a car, you can get a ton of tech, even a computer with your <laughs> top flagship GPU. So when spending 2,300 US dollars, you really have to ask yourself whether it is worth it. And the NA4 from Fira Audio are worth it. This is the EM that is worth that kind of price. And let me tell you why. This EM has the most impressive sound signature that I've heard in a really long while. They don't just go for being detailed. They have the detail of a flagship, but they have the impact of a bass head headphone or even of studio speakers. They are so impactful and so bassy while they have an outstanding level of detail. This is what made me fall in love with them. They aren't for the weak of heart. They are a pair of EMs that have incredible impact, incredible punchiness. They are so explosive and so full of life. I enjoy this type of signature. I enjoy it quite a lot. They sound live and they have a ton of technology inside to warrant that. Basically, you don't pay for the product necessarily, but you pay for the research and development that went into designing that product. Designing the NA4 costs a lot. Making them, I don't know. I don't really have any idea or any way of determining what is the cost of producing them since most of the drivers are built in-house and I don't know how much it costs to build the driver. The machinery to build one must be quite pricey, but developing something that sounds so good, that is expensive. That is where money is going when purchasing expensive audio products. It usually goes into designing them, not necessarily into producing them, but into the company knowing how to make them. It is quite pricey. I even tried making a pair of headphones once. Guess what? It didn't work very well. <laughs> I mean, it worked very well. I used a pair of drivers and I tried to do the acoustic damping and I tried to make damping for the drivers, but the sound never had any bass. And uh, even to this date, I was not able to fix that project. Maybe sometime I will make a headphone. I would be curious to try to make one again, but I do not have the knowledge to make one. Just know this, I will need to collaborate with someone to make one because I'm not good at it. But the guys at Fear Audio, they are very good at making games. They have an interesting way of making those. They have bone conduction based drivers and they have balanced armatures, but that's not all. They have the bone conduction driver designed in such a way that you don't really need sticky tips to use it. And that's a big thing. For most bone conduction drivers, you need to have extremely sticky tips and tips that just stick to your ears and are uncomfortable after a while. For example, spin fit. Spin fit is a type of tip that is quite sticky. At least to my skin, it's always sticky. Every single spin fit tip I had was extremely sticky, like it sticks to my skin. And that is why they are good for bone conduction drivers. They help conduce the sound to the bones of your ear, and that helps a lot. Usually for bone conduction driver based DMs, you can't use any other tips. But for the NA4, you can use any tips you have around the house. The ones installed are excellent. Any other pair of tips, even final tips, everything works perfectly. You just wear them. They also provide a good amount of passive noise isolation despite being vented. They have a very good ventilation, so you never hear driver flex, you never hear microphone noise from the cable. They are quite well isolated from both, but they isolate quite a bit. They isolate between 20 and 25 decibels of passive noise isolation, depending on the frequency you're talking about. But the bass, the bass is so good. And the sound signature is why you're paying the money for them. Like this is a cable, this is the EM. 
to the untrained eye, everything just looks normal. I mean, they do have a 4.4 balanced connector, which I appreciate a lot because I'm using them a lot with iBaseo DX320. This is also a daily driver for me. The video is supposed to be about what I used on a daily basis. Those two, DX320 and the NA4 from Fira Audio. I use both on a daily basis. The only other product I use on a daily basis is the Hyphen HA1000 version 2, but I already made a video, a full written review, and hopefully published both by the time I'm publishing this video. I published the full written review already, but not a video review. But yeah, this is pretty much what my daily driver is like. But those EMs, those EMs are special. They have the base and the extension in the lows that you typically see in a high-end headphone. I think the only headphone that had such a good base extension and low end reach was Audes LCD5. I think nothing impressed me quite as much as LCD5 and the NA4 from Fira Audio. Don't know, it's surprisingly good. I have no idea why. I don't know, they, are, they aren't even sold to be base head or to be excellent in any area. The marketing material is very scarce. I had a hard time writing the review because I couldn't find that much information about the technology inside. But let me tell you what. The sound is something you will not forget. You won't forget the kind of signature that the NA4 has. Even the aesthetic is okay. They are pretty beautiful, but that's about it. They are a silvery metallic kind of EM with a beautiful face made of sapphire. But that's it. They are not that special in the design, at least in the outer design. The detail and the resolution level is actually pretty much similar to how the ZCD5 is like the only headphone that I have and which kind of compares to it. They don't really compare so well to Hyphen HA1000 version 2 because 1000 version 2 is much wider in the soundstage and doesn't have quite that good of an instrument separation. Fira Audio NA4 has outstanding instrument separation and a more focused soundstage. It's not small, it is a wide soundstage, but it is smaller than what HA1000 version 2 has. Audes LCD5 also doesn't have the widest of soundstage. Both those and LCD5 would be good for studio work and for mixing and mastering. Then there is the overall refinement and naturalness of the midrange is like the NA4 was made to not be fatiguing but to be rich and to have all the textures you should have in your music. Usually when you have an EM that is extremely detailed it can be extremely fatiguing too. A good example is the Final Audio A8000 which is quite fatiguing. It's a very fatiguing EM. It's very detailed. Like it, It's like giving you a whole shower of details. But when it is that fatiguing, I cannot really use it on a daily basis. There is also the clear tune monitors, Da Vinci 10, which was outstanding in detail, but they didn't have quite that much bass. They are quite bright in the tuning. The NA4, those aren't very bright. They are very, very good with the bass. They have an uplifted bass, a recessed midrange, and a somewhat uplifted treble. So they have a V slash U shaped signature. And this is where everything comes down. I want you to understand that even though those are my favorites, I enjoy V shaped or U shaped signatures. I enjoy having a strong bass and I enjoy having a stronger treble. I don't mind the slightly recessed midrange. Even so, I used the Sandy Audio Peacock for as a daily driver for a really long time, so I don't mind having a 4 mid midrange, but I really need a good bass and a good treble extension. At least the extension should be good. And this is what the NA4 gives me. It gives me superb extension. It's so airy and so well extended in the treble and in the bass too. You can hear the subsonics with them and without special tips. Usually when special tips are implied in the discussion, that means it's going to be hit and miss for some people because fit isn't perfect. And uh, Fear Audio is actually has thought of this already because you can order the NA4 in custom form and ordering a custom means that you aren't going to have any comfort issues. They are going to be absolutely perfect, at least if you got your impressions right. But I suppose if you are willing to spend 2,300 US dollars, you can find somewhere to good take impressions of your ears to get customs. Anyways, do get customs if you want the best comfort and sonic experience. Get the universals if you want them to have some resale value and if you aren't quite sure if you are already set on them. Also, the universals are quite beautiful and quite comfortable, so you don't sacrifice that much. It's just that the custom is made for your ear. It is more comfortable than the universal. This is the EM that I've been using on a daily basis. It's so pricey that I don't expect a lot of you guys are going to go for them. I will still leave links in the video description so that you can check them out. They are pricey, but they are worth the price. Usually when I review something pricey, I have like second thoughts about saying that they are worth the price. Like, should I say this? Should I not say this? 
I mean, I usually just spend a lot of time thinking about that because I don't want to feel guilty. I don't want you to spend your hard-earned money and then tell me that it wasn't worth it. So this is why I try to give you the most honest, most direct and most true impressions of what I feel about each product. So at least I can say that I instructed you with all of my knowledge. So at least I gave you fair advice. Now, if it didn't work, then I messed up. But usually it tends to work. At least if you want to send me a message and if you want to ask for recommendations, always state your taste and prior experiences with EMs and headphones because it helps me a lot determine what you're going to like best. The Fear Audio A4 is an EM that you are going to die for. Like the sound is so to die for. It's like the type of sound I dream of. I dreamed of having this type of sound. It's like a Sennheiser EA800, but actually done well. Actually comfortable and with actual richness in the sound. It is not quite as splashy, which is good because the IA800 was quite splashy. And it's actually like a combination of all the advantages from all the EMs I have reviewed today. Like everything combined and taking only the advantages of everything just resulted in this signature. It's so well tuned to my tastes. The company probably had no idea when they sent this to me that I was going to like them. They just went with, yeah, Neon 4. They have a line of EMs that is around the same price point and Neon 4 was in the middle. It wasn't the most affordable, it wasn't the most expensive, but yeah, I like them. They, this is a job really well done. I thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll consider pushing that subscribe button if I was at least remotely enjoyable. I hope you'll consider subscribing to Audio File Heaven. I hope you like this video so that you can let me know that you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. Like You are doing the best job here, not me. You, you, for watching the video. Thank you. Hope you have a lovely weekend there and hope we'll see each other soon. Bye-bye.